jobs in Qatar what are your expectations as you come to work in this small gulf country what is your basic minimum salary what are your benefits what are you working hours all in this video by the way don't forget to subscribe to this channel support this channel by subscribing Hi guys, welcome to this channel and if it's your first time, support this channel by subscribing. By the way, don't forget to give us the thumbs up because it's the only way I'll be motivated to make more videos. For the returning subscribers, thank you so much. For the new subscribers, thank you so much for coming to this channel. Please consider subscribing. In today's video, we are going to look at jobs in Qatar. What is your expectation? What is your minimum basic salary? What are your working hours? And what are your other benefits? Most of us will got this other opportunity or this opportunity. And we all know this is Qatar 2022, where we have a lot of opportunities because of the FIFA World Cup. That collects a thousand and millions of people coming together to play one game and get one way the other way. But you are given that opportunity or you're given that privilege as we talk about to come and that privilege is giving you a visa to come to this country. What are your expectations? What do you expect exactly? First of all, let us try to, to look at what do you expect when you come to Qatar. Remember, Qatar is one of the richest countries in the world. And as you come to this country, you will only you will not get surprised to find what we call towering skyscrapers all over, beautiful shopping malls, you know, first of all, they will just give you a vista impression of a glamorous and a wealthy city. Qatar will expect you to recognize his ruling family. That is one thing that you need to consider. Names and rulers' names, and it's only just a bright way to do so. Because you remember, you in, in that country, you have to do such. Remember, some of you you being sponsored by what you call. Uh, being sponsored by a sponsor. Normally, most of the people come on what you call work visas, sponsored by either company or a person. Remember, that is good for you. If you come that way, it's good for you. Because you don't need to do any kind of work. All the paperwork will be done by your company, or will be done by your employer, uh, sponsor. All you will need as yourself, all you need as yourself, the important documents that you will all know that we talked about. You will only need your passport, your certificates in case your job requires you to be to have that certificate. And still more or furthermore of that, your employer will do all the paperwork as he was with, he will he or she will have to process for you what you call a residence permit. But remember, in the process of processing for you a residence permit, of course your employer or your sponsor will advise you accordingly. Remember, he will not fail to advise you about the probation period, withholding your passport until your residence permit is out. And also, other things that he will not fail to advise you is about the further medical checkups that you will need to take. Remember, you go and take, or they will take what you call medical checkups, and normally what they look for, they will look for what you call the air, they will check for your blood, and as the process of checking for your blood, they are looking for what you call HIV or TB stresses and what you call, you take what you call your chest x-rays. That is part of, it is part of uh, the requirements for you to get what you call a residence permit, right? Still, further on that, they will have to take your fingerprints, yeah. As per the government rules or per anyone that is coming to this country, anyone that is working to this country, they'll have to take your fingerprints. 
and that is one requirement for you to get what we call a residence permit after you passing the medical and the other requirements that are needed by the company and according uh, needed by the government and according to what the labor law says in this country so the last step of it all you'll have to take what you call the fingerprints that one establishes or grants you that you will have what you call the residence permit you are now a residence or you have you have the set a residence status in the country what do you expect remember we talk about in number two we are going to talk about what you call the basic minimum salary what do you expect most of us, most of us as we are coming we already signed the contract in our country remember for the sky interview that you went to or what you call one-on-one -on -one or personal interview that normally most of all or some of them go or some of you you went through as you're coming here but remember still they will, they will send you a copy of what you call a copy of the contract and that copy of contract will just be an agreement between you and the employer that you'll have to sign to acknowledge that you've accepted the terms and conditions and after that job contract is being signed then they'll definitely they'll definitely send you what you call a job offer and that job, job offer meaning you'll sign it and they'll send it back in case you are outside the country then probably that means you've accepted to work for that company or you accepted to to work for that sponsor that you've signed for and he's willing or you've accepted to accept the visa and accept all the requirements at glance or given on your table by after signing that one in position number three let us try to look at the basic minimum salary or what we call the basic minimum salary still while we're talking about number two the basic minimum salary and we say remember effective march 2021 a new degree was gazetted and signed in the catalog which is 17 article number 17 of 2020 which gazetted what you call a minimum basic salary for all workers for all private workers in the country including what you call the domestic workers remember the basic salary was put at what we call 1000 catarial for all people and apart from that there was inclusive of 300 catarial that is what we call an equivalence that is called the food allowance then still apart from that they also added what you call 500 catarial for accommodation allowance but remember most of the jobs here in Qatar, or most of the jobs that are sponsored by either company or a person, they will probably give you what you call accommodation and they will also give you what you call transport. Very few people, very few jobs that will not give you accommodation and transport, depending on which kind of job you are doing and how better you negotiated in or what was piloted in what you call your contract that you signed at that time. But in this case, we are going to look at a situation whereby your basic salary, remember, everyone's basic salary for eight hours is 1,000 katavia. Let us look at the other uh, average benefits that all of you have Meaning that if your basic salary is 1,000, if that company provides for you food, then it will not give you the 300. If that company still provides for your accommodation, it will not give you the 500. And what does it mean? That for your eight hours, if you're, if you're working for eight hours, your basic salary or your minimum salary for that month will be the equivalent of 1,000 Qatarian. Hope you're on the right page. Then on the situation two, if that company is providing accommodation and does not provide for your food, that means for eight hours, you'll be getting 1,300 Qatarian. And that's about 1,300 Qatarian. It is the 1,000 for eight hours and the 300 for food allowance. If the company gives you accommodation, then let us try to look at situation two, whereby the company is giving you accommodation and does not give you or is not giving you accommodation then is also not giving you food that means when you add the basic salary of 1000 plus the 300 of food allowance then you add the 500 of accommodation allowance then probably you have a total of 1800 quarterly that is per month that is I, that is what it is but remember, it is all depends on how, which kind of job you're going to do. 
or which kind of job that you are going to do at that time. There, there's, there's some jobs that are more than that. And if you're so lucky enough, then it will probably be more than what you expect. But remember, right now we have what you call the FIFA World Cup projects. The FIFA World Cup projects. And uh, believe me or not, most of the people that are being recruited now, they are getting a different, they are being, they are signing contracts of different amount of money, which is more than even what is existing right now. Because they are being recruited on a particular project, on a particular road. Remember, Qatar 2022, we have what we call the FIFA World Cup. And I'm talking about the opportunities that are glanced, the very many opportunities out there. The very many recruitment companies out there recruiting people at glass at in all fields from the cleaning department for the security department for the technician department for the gentleman power it's the very many companies giving out visas there to recruit people but remember as you also go to those companies look at what you call a genuine company try to ask people around who are this side they can oh try to ask people that are already here they can definitely refer you to those basic companies or those good recruitment companies that you can really use in your country or you can still get in my, my you can get my channel then you can still watch those companies i talk if you if you're coming from the security if you're coming to security which is generally the the heating the, uh, the hot cake right now you can try to check a few companies i talked about and you know which one suits for you and if that recruitment company has the same company then you probably know when i go to this company this is what it has to be and this is what it has to be at the time but remember now i'm talking about the projects that we have new projects that are coming in and these projects are what you call fifa world cup projects which which differ from what other projects that for all the, those other people came with they come with the ordinary so meaning that uh, some of this project, I just got analysis and I was trying to talk to someone. I looked at the contract of someone he signed right now at the job offer. And that job offer was 1,700. It was 1,700. Remember, 1,700 for eight hours, which is actually very good for right now. So if you get that job offer and they're giving you 1,700, Qatar real for eight hours, minus food allowance, it is a very good deal. You take it. Don't lose the opportunity. You come this side, then you hustle from that side. This is pretty very good for, for that time. So that is what you would expect as a salary. So from what I've told you, from the minimum, what you need, what you need to know right now and what you need to put in your head is that what is the minimum I'm getting if I'm working for eight hours? That is very important. That's the only question that you need to answer for yourself. For the rest of excess eight hours, for the excess of uh, I'm working 12 hours, first focus on yourself in eight hours, what is my basic salary? Because when we go to overtime, when we look at overtime, you find that some of the companies, each of the companies they are trying to calculate or try to calculate is overtime in a different form or in a different form. Why? Because they will have some kind of clauses they put, or say transport allowance, the delay allowance, uh, they will have all sorts of. But first look at what is your basic salary as you come. And the new offers right now are 1,700, which is, I looked at one job offer, which is partially very good for that for the start. You can have for that for the project, it's very really good for, um, very good for you. So probably that's what you expect, that you expect the minimum, it will be 1,000. And if you're given, if you given food and accommodation, whatever in that kind of project, whatever that company go, that means you'll have one thousand for eight hours. And if you're not given food, uh, and if you're not given food and accommodation, that means you'll have a total of eighteen hundred kataria that is per month. If you are given any of either of the two, if you are given, if you are given food and you're not given accommodation, then probably you'll. you'll be getting 1500 but it's so rare for sponsored it's so rare for sponsored uh, companies of sponsored individual uh, for companies sponsored work visas to have what you call separate accommodation normally you have what you work they normally give you accommodation what i decide with they will not give you they may not give you food but uh, guarantee a hundred percent they will give you what you call accommodation and that means for your eight hours, you're entitled to 1,500. So if you are, you're signing right now a contract, and you're signing a contract that is bringing you right now, and it is 1,700, uh, uh, 1,700, then probably that is a very good deal. You can have to take it at that time, and it's, it's pretty very good for the World Cup opportunities here in Qatar. 
Then, uh, still number three, I mean, we are just going to look at what we call the working hours. Most of you will ask about the working hours. Yes, the working hours mostly, no, most of the time, the working hours will differ according to a particular project you are working in or according to a particular project that your company has has for you for that time. But remember, when you look at Article 73 and Article 74 of the Katali Balo, it provides what we call the maximum a maximum ordinary working hours of a worker, which a worker is required to work 48 hours in a week. Okay, that is at the rate of what you call eight hours. That is why when you go back to calculation of the salary, that's when you go back to the setting of the, the basic salary, which I told you the basic salary is 1,000, which is 1,000 for eight hours. Meaning that was just uh, meaning that the basic working hours, the ordinary working hours of a person in a week, it will be 48 hours. But it will got actually that one, it's for the government, the law, that's what the labor law says. But again, it will also depend on what kind of agreement that you sign with your, your employer or your sponsor. If you're going to work more than that and it's has no problem, then they'll probably need to pay you what you call overtime or they'll pay overtime or over time for that particular day that you've, you've worked at that time. But remember, still, when we look at the 48 hours, there is what we call uh, the Ramadan period. The Ramadan period, you find that the, the, the actual workers, the actual hours a person is working, is supposed to work in a week, is 36 hours. That is if we take a calculation of a person working six hours per day. That means in Ramadan, a person, a normal person, is supposed to work 36 hours, six hours per day. That is what it is. But remember, to some time, to some extent in Ramadan, it can be even taken to what we call um, more than to 10 hours or more than to, to, to that level whereby you can work more than 10 hours in a day. Why? Because it will depend on what kind of arrangement your country uh, or your company has with uh, with these contractors or with this client. That's when it will come in. But remember, all that has to be put in as has to be put in mind and you should know that this has to be happening or this is what exactly has to happen for this particular time. Remember when we took at when we look at all these basics you you expect all these basics and where the all the basics coming from is you have to look at what you call the contract that you sign and you have manually read and proofread and understand each of those words that are being written in the contract at the same time. When we look at another one, we look at the benefits. Uh, we talked about the benefits as we look at number four. We look at uh, what we call the benefits. And those benefits that we are talking about right now is that we talk about the benefits of food and uh, accommodation allowance. Remember, I told you in most of the sponsored companies, they do give what we call accommodation to their workers. They will give you accommodation for, 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 for you and probably you may find yourself in that accommodation maybe in one room you are staying eight people or four people or six people or even 12 people depending on how lucky you are and depending on what kind of company you go to and how good that company is you find the good companies where people are individually staying for people in that room they have a fridge they have washing machines and everything that is done for them and and that's those that will even give you food and those that will not give you food they will probably provide for you they will provide for you a kitchen and they will provide for you gas cookers gas plates and they will also give you gas to cook for yourself and that's probably it can be that arrangement by individual company at one moment because remember not all companies are the same you know the good ones they may be a big company but it's a bad company they may be a very small with a small company with a small number but apparently very good company and providing those services which are generally some one would get as promised in what we call the labor contract at this time. So be sure that if the company is going to give you food, then probably it will give you food. And if it's going to give you food, then when you look at part, part the ministry or part, part the labor law, it's supposed to give you three meals and probably that is where the food allowance comes in and uh, it will probably give you the three meals and it has to give you uh, three meals because it is your right as when you look at uh, uh, the, 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 the what when you look at the 
the, the laws that govern the labor in, uh, in Qatar here. Still something that we need to stress is uh, accommodation. I, I, I told you uh, we talk about accommodation. That accommodation, most of these sponsored companies or most of these companies sponsoring workers on the work visa, they normally will give what we call accommodation. They normally give what we call food. They, uh, some of them will give you food at one way or the other. And, uh, Still, that is going to help you uh, calculate effectively on how better you have to save your money or how to have to spend your money. In case of those two benefits are being given to you at one time. When we talk about transportation, yes, most of this transportation is what we call company transportation, and they normally they will transport you from work to the area of uh, from the area from accommodation to the area of work and from work to accommodation that's where when you go back to calculate when you go back to calculate over time i think that period that period of movement from work to, to work and from work to, to accommodation where you stay has to be calculated and subtracted when you are calculating what we call the over time for that level so pre pretty very good and that is what it is and thank you so much for coming back to this channel. Hope those people coming here, people coming in, or people ready here, you can take a lot of this and probably this is uh, something that you need to know and it's going to help you as you sit down and try to plan accordingly or plan accordingly. By the way, don't forget to to give that a thumbs up because it's the only way I'll be motivated to make more videos for you for more and get more important information. Uh, if you're new to this channel, please consider supporting this channel by subscribing. By the way, don't forget to click the bell icon because it's the only way that will be updated or you will be notified when I upload a new video. Remember, it is Mix from the Mix, uh, it's Mix my name, and uh, from the Mix Creation TV. Thank you so much. See you again in the next video as we try to see other uh, other ways or other opportunities or other good information that we need to share. With one of us. See you again in the next video.